I want you all to imagine your idea of the perfect vacation. Now, I'm guessing you either imagined being on a tropical beach, exploring a foreign city, or skiing down the snow-capped mountains. And this would be the perfect vacation spot, correct? Now, what if I add your family, and talking gummy bears, and the sand on the beach was made out of sugar, and when you're skiing, you didn't have to wear jackets, and it would rain candy every hour, and at the end of the day, Taylor Swift would serve you your favorite food. Now, maybe that would be my perfect vacation, but just think of something like that more personalized to your specific taste. Now, most likely, your newly imagined vacation is even better than the one you had thought was originally perfect. Therefore, your intended vacation before was indeed not perfect. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about perfection. Perfection is one of the most complex terms in existence. It is only an idea, and a false one at that, because it can never be obtained, and there's always room for improvement, and there's always a possibility of a talking gummy bear. Perfection is ingrained in everyone from birth, in an activity as simple as a board game. For example, there is a board game called Perfection, and for just $39.99 on Amazon, you can buy this wonderful game. The object of the game is to place matching pieces into matching holes before the time limit of one minute runs out, and if completed, your child has claimed perfection. And if not, well, your kid is just average. But that's insane. Nobody can be classified by something that's plastic. But let's be real here. If I had something that told me I was not perfect because I didn't complete the objective in the time slot allotted, I would obviously be disappointed. But don't feel so bad if your child didn't complete this game because on YouTube you can watch college students failing to obtain this level of perfection this game projects. I felt a lot better after hearing that. Oh, and did I mention this game is meant for children four and over? So if a college student cannot complete it, how would a four-year-old? On another topic, I'm guessing most of you either have a daughter, sister, or niece, and most likely they have seen at least one Disney princess movie, if not more. Although, after researching Disney for months and months, I have realized its many flaws. Before going into this, I'm not saying that I hate Disney or anything because I love Disney. I'm just saying that I believe they do not project the correct lessons. All the princesses in the movies always need a man or her beauty to save her, which basically is saying that obtaining a perfection of beauty will get you anywhere in life. For example, Snow White and Sleeping Beauty were only saved because of their beauty and not of their morals or talents. And they were only beautiful and perfect because they were drawn to be. Also in Cinderella, Prince Charming instantly fell in love with Cinderella due to the way she danced, perfectly and because of her beauty, not her personality. On another topic, I'm, gu I'm guessing that you, <laughs> sorry. Um, I would also like to say that all the princesses in the movies are astonishingly skinny with abnormally small waists. There is not one Disney princess who comes close to, let alone exceeds the weight limit of 156 pounds, which is the average American female weight today. Let me just show you an example of what Sleeping Beauty would look like with a realistic waist. First seeing this picture, a few things came to mind. One, is Disney saying that women's waist should be the size of their necks? <laughs> and two, while I was watching Sleeping Beauty as a child, I did not notice Aurora's small waist. But now realizing this, the first words that come to my mind are eating disorder, too much exercise, unhealthy, but when I was a child, none of these ideas passed through my brain. However, today every one in 10 high school girls have an eating disorder. Additionally, nearly 50% of girls aged six to 10, those who look up to princesses the most, wish they were thinner. Therefore, Disney was not only teaching our daughters, sisters, and nieces, but also our brothers, sons, and nephews that women always need their beauty and dependence upon men to be deemed successful by society today. Finally, in Disney princess movies, everything always ends in happily ever after. But as showcased here in real life, that is just not the case. 
I would also like to point out that most of you have either heard of Albert Einstein, Thomas Jefferson, or Thomas Edison. Like, come on, they're quintessential people which every American learns about in elementary school. Albert Einstein can definitely be labeled as one of the most intelligent human beings ever. And Thomas Jefferson, our third president, the author of the Declaration of Independence, and an individual that would read up to 16 hours a day, was dreamed perfect in several different time periods. And just that the fact that Thomas Edison was one of the most inventive and revolutionary people ever that has ever walked this earth. These are the people which modern perfectionists strive to be. But let's see how perfect they really are. Did you know Albert Einstein was an incredibly eccentric person because he had odd habits and difficulties in school? And if Einstein was born in today's time period, he would most likely be diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, which is a mild form of autism. Also, Thomas Jefferson had similar difficulties in education like Albert Einstein, and since testing did not exist in his time, historians say he was most likely dyslexic. To add on to that, Thomas Jefferson wrote in the Declaration of Independence, all men are created equal. But he was an individual that owned over 600 slaves in his lifetime. Lastly, Thomas Edison's invention of the light bulb brought the world to a new level of perfection in technology. Although the invention was a success, there was room for improvement. For example, Edison could have made a compact fluorescent light bulb, also known as the swirly ones, to save energy, proving Edison's perfect invention was indeed not perfect. These individuals' perfection did not come from their looks or their personality, but it came from their intellectual ability. Since we are now all aware of how perfection is ingrained in us, what about its effects? The impact perfection has upon people individually is astonishing. I'm sure most of you know what OCD and anxiety is, but let me just refresh your memory. OCD, also known as obsessive compulsive disorder, is when one has obsessive thoughts that can lead to compulsive behaviors. And anxiety is the most common mental illness in America today, surpassing depression and eating disorders. Although, now that we realize what perfection can lead to, what can we do to stop it? I interviewed a psychologist about the topic for my talk tonight. Her name is Dr. Kim Painter. She deals with many kids, teens, and adults on OCD and anxiety, and while interviewing her, I specifically asked what the main cause for OCD and anxiety is within her patients, and she responded with perfection. She focuses on minimizing the individual's problem based upon how intense it is. Although, going to a psychologist to seek help for some can come across as terrifying and a little extreme, and I totally get that. So instead of talking to someone else about your problem, talk to yourself. What I mean is to find your own perfection. Discover your own median where society does not apply the pressure of perfection. Don't leave little room for error because then you cannot improve. Instead, set your own standards. Not the ones others are telling you to do, but what you're telling yourself to do. Today in society, people are applied the pressure of perfection by getting a good grade on a test, doing well at work, or getting on a lacrosse team. Not one of you can in this room can deny that someone or something has applied pressure for you to do something perfectly. Like whenever anyone says, no pressure, or don't mess up, you're being applied that pressure to do that task flawlessly. I believe perfection is a misconception. It is one of many things an individual will never be able to reach. Personally, perfection has impacted my life because I've always been focused on minimalistic aspects which don't matter to anyone else but me. For years, I've been tolerating this awful trait inside of me, which I will never let go of, but as Dr. Painter said, I can minimize it. And I have learned to minimize the problem. I no longer care if one line isn't perfectly straight or if I get a 6 out of 10 on my English reading quiz because I am never going to achieve perfection. So my advice to you is to eliminate the idea of perfection completely, and you'll be surprised at what you can accomplish. Thank you.